Think Keir Starmer and his wife might be Britain's biggest scroungers. It's free gear Keir and Lady Victoria scrounger, isn't it? And a return of politics to public service. When the gap between the sacrifices made by people and the service they receive from politicians grows this big, it leads to a weariness in the heart of a nation. This lack of trust can only be healed by actions. There we go. Well, Starmer's salary is paid for by the taxpayer. His previous salary was paid for by the taxpayer. He lives rent-free in a flat in central London, paid for by the taxpayer. He gets his MP's expenses. It turns out today that he's received £100,000 worth of gifts and freebies from wealthy donors. He's even got a load of stuff for his wife thrown in as well. He and anyone else who wants to build a new Britain built on decency, security, prosperity and respect is welcome in my Labour Party. Today, Arsenal Football Club have offered him free use of a hospitality box. This would cost around £8,750 per game, so he'll have to declare that on his next round of expenses. It's also emerged that his wife went to see Taylor Swift not once, but twice. He's had glasses, he's had suits, he's been to see Coldplay, all on someone else's dime. I believe in honour, integrity... Yeah, he's even declared things late. Remarkable, considering he said this. As ever, one rule for them, another rule for everybody else. He's lost all credibility, hasn't he? Do you remember this? I will be honest with you. There is a budget coming in October. And it's going to be painful. We have no other choice, given the situation that we're in. Those with the broadest shoulders should bear the heavier burden. Not if you're in the Labour Party. Angela Rayne has had a free holiday to New York, reportedly. Loads of clothes as well. And now Sue Gray, who's apparently walking around like our unelected Deputy Prime Minister, got a whopping great big pay rise. She's now paid more than the Prime Minister. She's on 170 grand. One source said it was suggested that she might want to go for a few thousand pounds less than the Prime Minister to avoid this very story. But she declined. Hmm. Starmer absolutely slammed Boris Johnson for giving Dominic Cummings a pay rise. There you go. There's always a tweet, isn't there? There's always a tweet. He keeps saying the Tories left a financial mess. We're all going to have to tighten our belts. Pensioners will freeze to death in their own homes this winter, but he gets to live the high life on a billionaire's dime. Look, every time his wife wants something, he just wanders up to Lord Alley like a socialist Oliver Twist, doesn't he? Gives out his begging bowl. Please, sir, please, can I have some more? There you go. Oh, anyway, pay your own way, Sir Keir and Lady Scrounger. Let's get the thoughts on my panel. Director of the Popular Conservatives, Mark Littlewood. We've also got businessman and activist Adam Brooks and broadcast journalist Judita De Silva. Mark, I mean, this is just absolutely unbelievable. From a bloke who stood in front of us every single day going, oh, we're going to be something very different. We're going to have honour and decency. And meanwhile, it's just freebie, 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 isn't it? It does seem that way. Again, I think there's a few things to parcel out here. You're right to say and to point out on those clips as you just have how puritanical he was. Uh, so he's apparently entitled to all of this. But woe betide any conservative who gets a private individual to pay for their wallpaper or take them to a concert or something. Uh, no, I would say this about Keir Starmer. I've never met the man. He's obviously much more powerful than me. He's the second most powerful person in Britain after Sue Gray. <laughs> and, uh, and, he's, and he's enormously richer than me. But I do know I have two things in common with him. One is I like to watch my own football team. That's Southampton in my case, Arsenal in his. And the second is, like him, I like to wear clothes. Yeah. Uh, but in both cases, I pay for my own tickets <laughs> there, right? And yeah. I pay for my own clothing. And and the bit that's so weird about this, I don't really object, and you can see why, as the leader of the opposition, companies and others would say, we'd like to take you out for a night at the theatre and have a discussion with you. This was a man who was likely yeah. to be prime minister. He's in high demand. But things that in your normal life you would buy yourself, yes. your clothes, the ticket to a football team that you want to support, and it's not as if he can't afford the top-end tickets at the, uh, the Emirates. 
to then take those from other people and then to find that these people who have gifted you that seem to have passes to number 10 Downing Street, that, I'm afraid, does smell pretty bad. Mm. I mean, the, the optics of this are absolutely appalling. Yeah, it gets terrible. worse by the day because more stuff comes out yeah. mm. by the day. He said he's going to keep taking this. How can he stand before the day? When that budget is delivered in October, mm. how on earth can he stand next to that? Meanwhile, when times get tough in the Starmer household, he just goes, sorry, is that Lord Alley? Hi, can, yeah. can my wife get some more clothes from you? Please? It's ridiculous. Mm. Look, at the weekend, I, I took a microphone and a camera to a high street and I spoke to a load of pensioners that, you know, some voted Labour, some didn't. But the anger out there is so high. They cannot believe what this government is doing. And as you said, they, the optics is terrible. They are living the high life. Keir Starmer has had more freebies than any other MP over the last five years. I mean, after what he said uh, mm. in interviews and, and in Parliament, this is the biggest hypocrite in politics. It's such a bad look, and they are so out of touch with the normal people of this country. And I would have thought that they would have given it a year or so, you know, before they, they, they decided to act like this. But it's after weeks. Mm. They've got no shame. Mm. Julita, is he Britain's biggest scrounger? Um, I don't know about Britain's Britain's biggest scrounger, but I think he's just um, playing the system that's available to him. And I do, ha I've tried so many ways to kind of put my mind in yoga positions to rationalize mm -hmm. how he would think this would work for him. And I can't come up with a reason. But I would say that this is what happens where there is more full disclosure. Because I think if all polit leaders before him truly fully disclosed their gifting indulgences, mm. they would probably be clock clocking up the same amount of money as Keir Starmer. Well, they, they, the have only, to, they have to disclose it if not, you're an MP. I mean, there are ways around, if, if you bracket it as something that was personal, you need not disclose it. There's always ways around being fully open with what you've accepted as a gift, but dependent on what kind of gift it was and in what vein it was given. Mm. But then at the same time, I also feel that I just can't understand why say no. Show a bit more but discernment is he, is he, and just say no, thank you. It's also the the, the big problem is is what what is Lord Ali getting for this? Exactly that. Yeah, yeah. no, we don't know, do it. Five hundred and seventy-five thousand pounds he's donated to Labour MPs over the last four years. He hosts them late late night, midnight um, pool parties at his Mayfair home with cabinet ministers. What is he getting yeah, but this, I, I think the from real, this hospitality? Mm. I, I'm trying to be even-handed here because I've sat probably on this very couch defending Conservatives in a similar position. I don't mind someone who's rich who decides to give money to a political party no. of their choice. The, the issue for me is he was given a pass to Number 10 Downing Street mm. without having a job. It was a temporary pass. They cancelled it. I think they realised they'd made an error. But that's appalling. And if you've actually got a rich benefactor mm. who says, I support the political project you're on, there's a whole load of money, and I'm going to give money to mm. Labour candidates as well, that's part and parcel of politics. But if that very person mm. then gets special access to Number 10 Downing and, Street, and still, what on earth still is going is. on? Apparently, according to Bloomberg, he's still attending meetings. Why? Well, that, that should again be put, oh, okay. you know, that should be clear what is his it, role is and he, what job and function he has. I think the good thing, the ugly good thing about this is that it throws the doors open to seeing how the brokerage of power happens mm. within this level of operation. And this is what happens. Like when somebody, it's one hand washes the other. If somebody donates, they're going to want something. Of so course. Nothing comes for nothing. And if this is the extent of it, it is a very, very poorly thought out execution plan to have someone have a pass to number 10. I still don't know who his advisors are. Yeah. I don't know what issue they have with just saying, if, like you said, if I bought, if I used to buy it for myself, I'll still buy it now yeah. because you would look better as a Labour government. But at the same time, it is nothing new under it's the sun. It's, it's an interesting, potentially anyway, psychological insight against Keir Starmer, though, isn't it? Yeah, how much in common with the working man and woman does this guy re it, it, does Nothing. this guy have? Yeah, I, I, you know, okay. Well, if you look at his early life, I mean, anyone who keeps having to bang on relentlessly about the fact that their dad was a toolmaker implies yeah. to me that maybe they don't have that much of a working class pedigree themselves. Yeah. Surely could come up with something. It's a bit. It was actually a bit fields of wheat territory for yeah, me yeah. to keep doing that. Well, his education was pretty 
pretty good education. There's not too much working class around that. Certainly his professional career, certainly the things he's been able to do for, for his mum in the later years of her life, bought a seven-acre plot in Surrey, which he turned into a donkey yep. sanctuary. It's fantastic, that, isn't it? No, plenty of people would, be, would love to do that. Lives in, lives in North London. And you get it to where you are today, multi-millionaire. And now he just thinks, of course, I'll take a load of freebies. Mm. That's not very... It's not very working class. It's it? not very working class. I mean, I do. Sometimes I wonder that uh, and worry that British politics is a bit too hair shirted in that American politicians go round and lie about how rich they are. Right? <laughs> they put a naught on the end of their wealth. They claim to be billionaires when they're only millionaires. Whereas our rich people sort of try to pretend they're poor. Yeah. I mean, I actually have to say, our former Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak, I think, for, for you know, a, a number of his faults, did this quite well. He said, I'm unembarrassed about the fact that I'm rich. I'm from a family that's been successful, that's worked hard. I'm not going to apologise for all this now, though. But you yeah. get the sense that this is a guilty pleasure for our present Prime Minister. He mm. doesn't really, you know, he, he likes being rich, but doesn't want to admit he's rich. Mm. That's why the my dad was a toolmaker came yeah. out in every other sentence oh, during yeah. the general election okay. campaign. I don't know why he doesn't just say, I'm affluent, I've had a successful legal career, the Prime Minister is on a high salary, yeah. I'm therefore going to pay for my own Arsenal tickets. Th th this... It makes me laugh because a whole generation of people thought that voting Labour was going to be something different. They were going to be their friend. They weren't going to rub it in their faces. And now they've faced a Labour mm. government under Keir Starmer that are freezing pensioners and living the high life and rubbing it in their faces. Uh, there's, some, there's going to be some real regret out there from youngsters that voted Labour. Well, I mean, how does he square this when it com comes to a budget or certain things, as, as Adam was raising there, about issues surrounding pensioners, etc.? When you think, well, you know, he's, he's, he is taking a lot of freebies. And that plays badly? Um, optically and PR-wise, he can't square this. But what, it can sh what he can ride on is say there has been full disclosure. And mm. I've always said I would be honest about what I've done, good, bad or ugly. That is a good thing. Going forward, there has to be a consensus and a real move to do things differently to show that I've seen the error of my ways, which is showing which shows growth and also culpability. But he has to use this as a mile marker to show that, like you said, if you are a Labour leader, walk in the path of what Labour, the Labour Party represents. You can't function in ways that are akin to the Tories mm. while bashing them because that shows inconsistency. Well, this is it. I, I wonder if he regrets being so... So pious or puritanical, as you were saying yeah. before, you know, because really you do... If you dish it out, then you're going to have to take it, I'm afraid. And he's dished it out more than anyone I can imagine when it comes to people, you know, whether it's wallpaper or... I blame his advisers as well. Yeah. I, I really advisor. do, because you would turn the Arsenal box down. I mean, I would. Oh, I'm a yeah. Anyway, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you burn it down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but come on. You just said to him, Keir, this is a bad look. Yeah, just but don't say that. Yeah, but he should know that himself, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, to be but honest with you, your advisers should be helping you on the margins. They should be correcting your grammatical errors. They shouldn't be giving you a moral also, compass. Uh, you need also, that yourself. Well, in all politics, you do have advisers that tell you about how optics work, because yeah. you'll yeah. be surprised how disconnected politicians are. But the optics everyday. here are so bad, yeah. he must be blind. Well, when he's saying as well, oh, I can't possibly sit in the stands because of security reasons, what's someone going to do to you at the Emirates? Throw an olive stone at you? <laughs> yeah, come on. Anyway, right, it's time for today for the Great British Giveaway and your chance to win the equivalent of having an extra 3,000